Hello, good afternoon, Kamlesh. How are you doing today? Doing good, sir. How are you, sir? Good, good. How is going? Were you able to do the homework? Yes, sir. Very good. Very good. This is impressive. Okay, Sanjana is here today also. Very good. Sanjana, welcome back. How are you doing today now? Hello, Sanjana, how are you doing today? Feeling better? Hey, Sanket, how are you doing? Hello, sir, I'm good. How are you? I'm good too. Thank you very much for asking. So, have you done your homework? Yes, I tried. I did it. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Is it working? Yeah, yes, so. Very good. Very good. I appreciate. Very good. Because, you know, mean stack. Mean stack goes with Angular, right? So A in the mean stack is Angular, and Angular is mostly based on Ajax, right? So you get to know Ajax once you need to use mean stack, right? In, uh, through jQuery, we use a lot of Ajax. Yeah, in jQuery also, yeah, but jQuery is not that much popular anymore, you know. We yeah. still use it. Uh, implicitly with Bootstrap <laughs> because Bootstrap uses it for its menus and things like that. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, jQuery was very popular. It's still popular, but you know, jQuery was vital at that moment when browsers were divergent from each other. Right? Some browser was doing one thing, another one was doing one thing, and we have to. Uh, check this thing that which browser we are working on and run the code according to that. But mostly now browsers are all unified, right? They are running like uh, query selector, query selector, all things like that. And then, you know, uh, you have event listeners now. So they have made life more easier in JavaScript. Though JavaScript by itself is a big mess, you know, I would say. Not a mess, you know, I would say that a big, you know, multi-language kind of thing <laughs> where you have so many ways to do one thing. Okay. Okay, great. So let me take a start. So I will love to teach today first and then, you know, I will go back and discuss your homeworks, right? So this is the agenda so that we can progress also. So where we were at. Mm. Uh, let me share my screen. Share screen. Okay. 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 Great. Let me open your code. This is not your code. And this is not your code yet either. And so, let me close it. So web framing and this is your code. Menthon is here. Okay, great. So app.js, right? So we are working on this code. Very good. And that I will check for you, you know, have you done Ajax thing? Okay, so since, you know, we are left with only two days, that is today and uh, tomorrow, right? And then we have to say goodbye. So let me teach you a very vital thing and that is MongoDB, right? So though two days are not sufficient to teach MongoDB, uh but let's start with it right because i can just uh, make a start and you can you know work around to uh you know learn further about it right so let's see what do i have in my recipe book 
So let me just scroll this entire SCP book. I'm going to send it to you, but just in case I miss it, let me put it in this video, right? Let me put it in this video so that you can see it in this video all the time. So is it my recipe book? Yeah, Express Stress. So this is my recipe book. I start, I have started with note, right? And then, you know, some vital things about Express. So for example, I have not, I have done something different over here, right? So see that, what is that? Okay, and then, so this is most of the time app.js, right? Not server.js, this is app.js. Right, node app.js. Because most of the time we use app. We can say server, so we can say anything, right? Okay. No need to have body parser, you know, I have mentioned right over here. So no need, no need. To have body parser now, right? And then we have get, and then we listen, and so basically, this is this is the basic structure of uh, of the Express server, and then you know we put things into it. Okay. And then, I'm describing that how do you populate uh, post routes, right? Um, Okay, so we have discussed EGS already, right? We have discussed EGS already. So you know what is EGS, how does it work? I have written some notes for you over here such that you can refer to them, okay? Uh, okay, and then So this is that weather request, HTTPS request, you know, this is something I have taught you already. You are getting weather updates uh, because of this. And this is something validator. I have not taught you this thing, but it is very easy. The deal is that once a user sends us an input, we must not consider that user very poised or very great man, right? we must treat every user as a hacker, right? So for that reason, whatever the input is, we must validate it and we must sanitize it, right? So basically this is how we use validator. So you can go, you can say npm install express validator and then you can use it like this. And you can go to their website and there they have given very simple examples and I went through them and I very easily implemented uh, the validator, right? Next comes MongoDB, right? So this is something I want to teach you today. Okay, so guys, this is on the screen right now and you have to follow through these steps in the recipe, right? So you have to go to this website and maybe this website directly, right? And then download .msi file Go to download folder, start installation, right? And when asked that install MongoDB Compass also. So Compass is graphical user interface for MongoDB, right? So don't forget to install Compass, otherwise life would be a little tough in MongoDB, right? And then, you know, you have your uh, MongoDB installed something like this, this, this folder could be different, right? And 
go to this folder and once you have in this folder there would be two files mongo.exe and mongo.exe create shortcuts of these two files on your desktop right and then once you want to run mongodb you need to run mongod first and then you can run mongodb right so please swiftly go over these steps in your own systems and let me know once you have installed all these things please start it up now Okay, great. So you have installed it. Very good. So have you made the uh, shortcut at the desktop, as I said earlier? Please create the shortcut. The shortcut for what is this? This is compass, right? So yes, you can make shortcut for this, but also you need to make shortcut for the uh, for the MongoDB, uh, Mongod actually, Mongod.exe. You, no. you can choose to make a shortcut for mongodb.exe also, but mongod is very important. So for that purpose, you need to go to your uh, C, C drive. Yes, sir. In C drive, there would be a folder where you have, uh, yeah, yeah, program files. Yes, very good. Here, you know, you have folder like MongoDB. Very good. And server. And 4.2 and bin. Right. And here, you know, you would be having mongod.exe. This one. Yeah. So create a shortcut for this at the desktop. Okay. Right. Do you know how to create a shortcut? Let me copy. No, no, no need to copy, my dear. It will not run once you don't. You know how to create shortcut. Yes. I have to. But, uh, fourth, fourth option. Fourth option. Yeah, create shortcut, shortcut option. Shortcut. Ah, yes. Yeah. Let's not create a shortcut here. Do you want to? On the desktop, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so you have this test. So this is Mongod uh, shortcut, right? So now double click it to run Mongod, right? So Mongod is the server for MongoDB, right? So first we have to run this server to access MongoDB, right? Now, if we want to access MongoDB, we can access MongoDB command line by going at, by, by, by clicking MongoDB shortcut, right? So you go back in the same folder just let me show you, go back and here we have mongodb.exe also. Above this, yeah, this one. And here, you know, create a shortcut also at the desktop. Yes, sir. Very good. So go, go to desktop, right? So now once your mongod is running, now you can run mongodb. Double click it. Don't be afraid of prof. Okay, so once this is greater than sign, this is the this is the uh, prompt for MongoDB. So, for example, you can issue command show databases or show DBs. Show space DBs. Right. So these are built-in databases. Right. Uh, if you want to make a new uh, DB. I don't remember what was the command. Create on this. Create. Is it create? Create database. Create space database. Or create DB and just space test. What does it say? Unexpected. Okay. okay. So let me see that what is the command, right? Uh, let me give you the command. Give me a minute, okay? Um, 
because I don't use it at command line and command line commands are a little different than the commands which we give on, in the code. So just give me a minute, okay? Mm. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to create a DB, hmm. Show DB is no, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Use database, use uh, use and then name of the database, yeah, use right. Test. Use and then test DB, right? Use test DB and it will create it and also use it, right? Enter, yes, right. So basically, now uh, once again, show DBs, right? So, do you have test DB somewhere? Can you see it? No. No, sir. What message did it show you? Can you, yeah, thank you very much for enlarging it. I was quite unable to see it. Okay, switch to DB, test DB, show DB. So do it again. Show DBs, right? And okay, okay. This is the reason that since it is empty, it is not actually showing it, right? So uh, just write DB, press enter, yes. right? So basically, you know, it is in the test DB, right? So this is, uh, you can say that this is a feature of MongoDB that once it is totally empty, right? So you cannot see it. So now the deal is that if you know MySQL, so in MySQL, once we have a database, we have tables. In MongoDB, we have collections. Right? In MongoDB, we have what? In MongoDB, we have collections, right? So instead of tables, here they have collections, right? And over there, inside tables, we had records, right? We have records. And here, within the collections, we have documents. Right? And basically, whatever the promise MongoDB tried to accomplish, I think that it is being partially fulfilled, not fully, right? Okay, so having said this thing, say for example, you want to make a collection, right? You want to make a collection in this database, right? So you can say something like this, uh, So you can say something like this, that uh, db dot collection, you know, whatever the name you want to give it to. And then, so the deal is that once you start inserting into a collection, the collection is, you know, automatically generated. So if you want to, for example, insert into a collection, so basically you have to do this thing that db dot so for example, uh, instead of collection, we say users. So here we need to say username, right? So db dot, so don't say collection, say, say users, name of the collection we have to give, like name of the table. So db dot users dot insert one. Insert one. Insert one and one would be capital one O N E one please okay right and O would be capital right insert one bracket starts right bracket my dear parent okay yeah parent starts parent ends and within this parent within this parent we have to give an object. Right, a JavaScript object. So we will say, for example, brace start. Brace, 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 my dear, a curly bracket. And also end it. 
and within curly brackets say name name colon within quotes camelish comma major no no quotes major colon within quotes cs right so this is the javascript object and go at the right hand side right side and press enter right so basically uh, you know they have inserted it so inserted an object so now you can see say for example you can say show collections right so it has created a collection with the name users right so uh, now here say db dot users dot find brackets parents parent close enter right so basically it has found this object right so basically it has created this object into the database and has found it right and you can see this thing that mongodb by itself assigns an id it is known as underscore id right so this is a unique id which mongodb assigns to every document which you insert right have you got it yes so so this is something about uh, mongodb i will not go into further commands because it would be really happen that we we are going to com give commands over here so now i will focus more on compass now go to your desktop and run compass by double clicking its shortcut you have not created shortcut for compass so go to the finder right and here find uh, mongodb compass mongo compass community it is on the top right now yes so click it please so this is like php my admin for mongodb right menthan yeah okay so compass so there there are other softwares available for gui purposes with mongodb but i love it it serves my purpose at least okay so it is opening and connect connect yes so it has connected you with the local uh, database right and here you can see that we have various databases showing so which one you have just created test db, test DB. so click it right so this is test db it has a collection users so click it right so this is that particular document is placed here right have you got it guys everybody got it now how to use it inside your project right this is something we have to do now so now stop share and let's start using it right so stop share and i will take over from here thank you thank you welcome my dear so let me share my screen so i was actually showing you the recipe book so this is my recipe book right in front of you so i have you know shown you almost all, all of it okay now the deal here is that if we want to use mongodb inside our code right we have to have some kind of interface of mongodb with our code and the best interface available is mongoose so we need to get mongoose into our project right wherever we want to use mongodb we need to use mongoose right have you seen mongoose ever in your life 
No, never. Mongoose. I saw. Mongoose is like a small animal, like rat, and it kills snakes. You know, haven't you seen it? <laughs> okay. So this is a little bit different mongoose, right? Okay. So in order to get it, we will say npm i install mongoose, right? And once we have got mongoose, so this is their code. Then we put an enter here so that you can see it all in one screen. So, so once we install mongoose, we'll say const mongoose require mongoose. So definitely, you know, we have to expose mongoose into our code. And then we connect it, right? Mongoose.connect. And we say mongodb slash slash colon slash slash localhost colon 27017. So you can say that this is default. This is default uh, port number for mongodb, where mongod runs, right? So this is the default port number for mongod. And then slash, and this test db is the name of the db which you want to connect with this particular code, right? So if this uh, database does not already exist, it will be created upon the execution of this line. Are you getting me guys, right? It would be created upon the execution of this line, right? Have you got it guys, everybody? Okay, so having said this thing, So before you go further, please, I suggest you that read this quick start document, right? So this is very important. And this document is written very beautifully. So you can just go over it and read it, right? So this is not a very big deal. Okay, so once, you know, we have got it. Okay, this is some code which they recommend that we must do, I have never done so, and this has not given me any harm till now, right? So I don't do it, right? And then, okay, let me go up to here and then, okay, then I will show you rest that, you know, how we are going to proceed with the rest of them, right? So let me just scroll over all these notes. Yeah, so notes were up till here. Right, so I have shown you all the notes over here, and now you can, uh, you know, I can, I will definitely say it to you, but you can see them in this video also. Okay, so having said this thing, having said this thing, so let me pay attention to your. Uh, so why not I copy this uh, file? and place it into your uh, folder, right? Let me do it so that you get it right away. Uh, okay, express related notes, right? So this is the file. I copy it, copy, and let me put it in the root, right? So paste it here. Okay, so now this has been pasted. We can see that it has turned green, mean that it has got an extra file, okay? So having said this thing, um, this is your file, right? Is it? Uh, yeah, this is your file. Let me close my file. Okay, once we have done so, what should we do? We will go to your folder. So what do we need now? Mongoose, right? We need to have Mongoose installed, right? So we say npm i for install Mongoose. Right? 
guys so it is installed so zero vulnerabilities so it is installed right so once it is installed now we require it in our code so we come over here hmm. we say require mongoose right require mongoose and mongoose is there right once mongoose is there we need to connect a particular database with our code right so let me take you to the recipe book and mind this thing we are not supposed to memorize all these commands because there are so many and they change with time that you will you know you would be wasting your mental mental faculties to memorize them all all that for all the time right with practice you get to memorize a few of them and that is perfectly all right okay so i have this command right so i have to say this thing and this i have already said and then i have to connect mongoose right copy this line and paste it over here sometime as you start using mongoose right uh, your uh, server may issue you some warnings so let's see if there is a warning so let's come to our desired folder oh what i have done i have where did i install mongoose i installed mongoose probably in my own folder right so so don't worry so we say cd space node 2 so let me let me run the node app dot js so it will tell that mongoose is not there okay oh oh it is installed okay i thought that i did not install it right okay so once it is installed and it is not giving us any warning it is perfectly all right let's do one thing control c and let me create a new database here uh, where is the database so instead of test db i say uh, test web programming db right now this is this is my compass so if you if i take you to the compass and i reload it you can see this thing that i don't have any db with the name test w wp db right is it here anything like this no right let me let me run this code uh, for you and then see that we have this db in, you know is there so i come here i run the code so as i run the code go back to compass refresh it right so we can see can we see uh no it is not created right hello yes sir it is not created it is not created so it, it is not giving us error but uh, probably mongoose is not here yet so we have to install mongoose okay cls and now we say node app dot yes it should have given us warning but it did not okay 
So budding server is running. Let's uh, refresh. Okay. And it is not showing, probably it is not showing uh, us the DB because of the same reason that DB is perfectly empty, right? If we want to confirm it, we can actually go here. What is this running? This is MongoDB running. So let me uh, come over here. Let me go to, uh, what is this? This is Mongo shortcut, right? And this is Mongo, so let's run this. It's taking some time to start. Oh, now it has started multiple instances, okay. So now we say use, what was the name? Test WP DB. Okay, switch to DB test WP and I say uh, DB. So test WP DB. So DB is there, but it is not showing because it is completely empty. Are you guys getting me? Hello? Yes. Okay, great. So sometimes, you know, we have odd features for various softwares. So I believe that like, for example, in if MySQL database is empty, it will still show. <laughs> this is the database, right? Here in MongoDB, they will not show it, right? Okay, so we come over here and now we want to get ready to insert our first record into DB by using our code. Right, so we go to our code. Where is our code? Right over here. And is it running in the server? Yes, this is running. So let's open it uh, over here. So let me open a new tab. And here, let me say localhost colon 3000. Right, so this is running and maybe right here in this me, let me make a process to sign up, right? Let me make a process to sign up, right? Why not? Why? What do you think? Right guys? Yes. Sir. Okay, so let's make a sign up process here. And since we have already connected our DB, so let's make the sign up process. So we come over here in the code. Uh, and then let's go into inside views and within views we have, we have, we have index.ejs. Let me copy this form from here. Copy. And let me go to me.ejs and paste this form right over here. Paste. Okay, once I have pasted it, so I can say that action item is now me, or you can use Ajax. Let me use Ajax, right? So let me use Ajax. So type is button because I am going to use Ajax. So what I'm going to put here, one thing would be name, right, placeholder name. The person is going to have a name, right? Then the person is going to have an email address. Um, and then we are going to have a password.
and placeholder is password. And button, we say that this is, the name is sign up. Sign up button. And here we say sign up, right? So we have just created this form and we want to use this form via Ajax. Right, we want to use this form via Ajax, right? So save it and let's come back over there just to see that form is there and it looks good. Let me just remove this pink you know, thing. I kind of don't like it, right? So where should I go? Who's going to tell me? Okay, say so if I have, I have forgotten completely that where is my CSS file? How I'm going to look for it? Who is going to answer this question? So should I open all the folders and here, where is the file, right? Or there is the some huh? folder. In the partials folder? Okay, let me let me fulfill your wish. And there is no Not CSS. in the partials. But in public, no, public, public folder. Why, you know, I don't want to go there, for example, you know. So how would I get to there? Um, find command F. No, I don't want to do it, for example. Look in the code. In the code, in the code, uh, you can see this thing app.use express.static. Static, static route. route. Yeah, static route underscore and so dir name plus public. So all the static routes are in public folder. Right? And if you go to public, you can see this CSS and in CSS we have this masters of CSS and instead of pink, we say sky blue. I like this color better than pink. Where is the pink? Can you see pink somewhere? This, this is pink, right? So let's say sky blue. Save it, right? And let's come back here, reload it. Right, it is, you know, running. Right guys? Hello, everybody. Yes. Okay, very good, right? So basically it is running and uh, it is about to take our input, okay? Okay, so having said this thing, having said this thing, let's close it. So let's create, uh, so let's go to this public and right inside public in JS folder, uh, where we have nav.js, let's have this thing over here. We say mm, Ajax function, right? Or Ajax functions, right? So we, we write this, uh, this file, new file. And we say that here we have Ajax functions.js. Okay, so here we, let me copy paste an Ajax function, very simple function I have shown you many times. So just, you know, it will help us to save some time here. So where, where did I write Ajax function for you? Do you still remember? In the remember? weather folder. Huh? In the weather folders. Where weather folder? Down. Oh. Next to it. Using which up, up, sir. No, this one, not this one. Uh, this one, main this weather folder, right? And here, where is the Ajax main.js? Yeah. Yes, sir. And main.js, so this is success and get weather, right, right, right. So this is the function, right? So this is the function. So let me just copy it. Copy and let's close it and paste it here. And since you know, I'm going, to, I'm placing it in one file and using it in another file, right? And you can imagine this thing that in this way, uh, you are not only learning this thing that how can you use mongoose, but you are learning so many other things also, right? So you are putting in one file now, and we want to use it in a file. And this is, 
I have done this thing with you for server i and previously, right? Now this is a, something I'm doing for uh, for you at the client side, right? So this is client side code. So you must know this thing. So once it is JavaScript all over, sometimes it happens that people would not recognize that you know which code is server side code, which code is like uh, client side code. So you must know this thing that, for example, we have made a public folder and there we have all the client side code placed, right? And uh, rest of the code is basically server side code, which we send to the client, right? Through various engines, through various routes, right? But this, whatever is being placed in the public is the client side, is the client side or uh, browser side code, right? So basically this is a function so we can say export this function, right? So we want to export this function get with, right? And once we export it, we can import it somewhere. So front end, we don't require front end, we import, right? In the server side, we, we said export and require, right? At the front end, we say export and then import. Got it? So if you'll understand this philosophy of export and import, it will help you a lot once you go for uh, Angular, for example. Right, got it? Okay, so we say export this function and we come back here and let's have uh, another, so this is Ajax function, uh, function.js, right? and uh, uh, where is that file folder? So this is JavaScript folder. And here we say we create a new file, new file and let's name it signup.js, right? So we have created this new file with the name signup.js. And here we say alert. Hi, right, so let's say hi, just to see that it's connected. And I want to connect it with what file? Me.ejs, right, ejs, right? And we come over here and right before this includes, I say script and we will say source, equal to, and the deal here is that we will not mention public, but other than that, right? So just, just to give reference. So for example, if I take you to partials, where, is, where are my partial being placed? And inside head, or maybe inside foot, you can see that this is like this. So slash JS slash whatever the name of file is. So slash, what is the name of the file? Name of the file is uh, signup.js, right? So guys here, you know, we are doing coding both for the server end and the client end. So this is not the case that we can just make one end first and then, you know, go to the other end. So we have to consider making both ends, you know, together especially when there is one developer only, right? And, but if there are multiple developers, then we can have stubs, we can have like postman, postman for example, which fulfills the server and request response thing. So you can get a note of this thing that you can explore postman. So postman is a very good tool for development purposes. So it fulfills the purpose that say, for example, you are working on the server end and there is no client side end which is made yet. So you can test the server end by using Postman. Okay, getting me? Okay, and it is used most of the time to test APIs also. Okay. So having said this thing, so basically this is signup.js, so save it. And let's see if it is running. Okay, so it says hi. Very good, right? So it is running.
Got it? Okay, now we come over here and we say, where is my sign up dot yes? It is right over here. So I delete it. And here I say, import, what do we want to import? Uh, No, let's say, let's name it, let's name it. So let me say post URL true. Okay, and then here I need to have data. And here I need to send data. Right, here I need to send data. Okay, and what else? There's one more line of code which should be here and that is missing, right? So let me find out, find it out for you. Let me go over here, right? And plus my best friend Google and here I will say Ajax, Post request W3 school. MDN is more comprehensive, but W3 school is easy to read, right? So you come here, Ajax request W3 school, get dot post. So go down. So I've been uh, with these references for so many times now that. I know where to find, right? So basically this is a line which is missing over there. Mm -hmm. Let me copy these two, right? And let me copy these two, just give me a minute. Give me a minute, please. Thank you, guys. I'm back. So, uh, copy these two lines and uh, and paste it over there, right? So we come back here and paste it here. Why these two lines actually? So let me tell you. Okay. So this line is a line which ha we have to give. But this one I have just copied for the purpose that how is your data should be formatted. Right, so you can just keep it for reference, right? And this is XHR. Okay, so this function has become Ajax post function, right? So this is Ajax post function now. And we have this uh, URL, we have to send it. We have success function callback, and this is the failure callback, we have to send it, right? And something else is there. No, everything is honky dory otherwise. So come back over here. Okay, we have to check the uh, function name. And okay, I wanted to say that this is not get weather. So we can say post sign up. Or post Ajax. Right, because this is an Ajax which we are we are going to use for so many purposes, right? So we say that this is post Ajax because it is generic. Can you see? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So having said this thing, so this is generic, generic. Having said this thing, 
having said this thing, now we have to we have to import it, right? So once we have to import it, we come over here. We say oh, again, post ajax. We say import post ajax from. Uh, let me check the syntax. Um, import import so import syntax let me see the javascript on import syntax so javascript i think it has from right import so let's see import so let's open this so it will tell so many complicated things, but I want to have a simple one. So go to examples, which are towards the, okay, here it is. So, no. So, okay, now it will tell, it will tell some, okay. Not here, uh, import, right? So import from right so basically import from this right so this is the syntax so import from this so we say import from uh, what is the name of the file ajax functions.js right So we are importing it from there and then say hi, right? Alert. Hi. Okay, once we do this thing, now we are expected to see an error. So I come here and if I reload it, okay, we did not see the error here. Let's inspect element, console, and here you can see the error. So this is saying import declaration may only appear at top level of a module, right? So it is saying that it should appear at the top level of module. So we say, okay, yes, boss, you are great. So where is my me.egs? This is me.egs or where we are saying type text or JavaScript, we say module. Right, downside is, downside is that this type module is not uh, accepted by Internet Explorer and some older browsers, but who cares? <laughs> who cares about them? Right, so basically, you know, we say it's modules and once we say that these are modules, so we reload it. Okay, resolving module specifier Ajax functions dot js okay i think that i misspelled it somewhere so sign up and ajax f u n c t i u n s dot js this is good do you think that we need dot slash okay let's try it let's reload it Okay, so something is missing somewhere. So import post Ajax, right? So how about spellings and things like that? Export function this and sign up import post Ajax from Ajax functions, right? Dot yes. Anybody, anything which you think is wrong? Something is wrong. Okay, let's go back here. Let's reload. So it says import not found default. So, but default is sign up 
or the S1. So, hmm. let me just see my reference code. I don't want to spend too much of time on it. So for example, So these braces are required, right? Right, okay, let's see if braces are mandatory. Uh, I did not anticipate it. Uh, they are mandatory, but probably they are. Okay. Save it. Okay, let's run it. Okay, now it is saying hi. So those braces are mandatory, right? So basically those are missing and this was the reason that it was not. So now you can see that, you know, we can put that function into one file, right? And export it from there and import it in another file, right? So in this way, we do reusability of code in JavaScript. So previously, before 2016, actually, JavaScript was not meant for such purposes. So usually we used to put all the JavaScript code in one file only, right? But now uh, you, you do it at uh, uh, some other way that we put one JavaScript and then another JavaScript on top of it, and bottom of it, right? So, but now we have more sophisticated techniques like I'm showing you right now, okay? So I have shown you how to export and require at the server end. And now I have shown you that how to export and import at the client. Right guys? So, so this code could be a good reference for you whenever you, you know, do some serious coding in uh, mean stack. Okay. Having done this thing, having done this thing, now let me send this Ajax request, right? So I say, I come over here. I say const, uh, what should I get? So let me go to this new and let me have some from here. So maybe let's have an ID here. So ID is equal to sign up name, right? Hello, copy. Paste, sign up, email, right? Paste, sign up, password, right? And then we have this button also. Let's give it an ID also. So this is sign up button. BTN, right? So sign up button. So once we have these IDs, right, let's get hold of these elements, you know, other ways also, but I don't want to convolute this situation. Uh, we come here, we say, uh, what should we say? Const, uh, I forgot. Sign up name, here we use camel case. Sign up name is equal to document dot get element by ID, sign up name, right? Then we have const uh, sign up email, right? Hello? Yes, sir. 
sign up email is equal to i'm sorry so sign up email and it would be equal to document dot get element by id sign up email right guys hello yes sir and then we have const what was the sign up password sign up password sign up password is equal to document dot get element by id sign up password hello everybody are you guys getting me right yes, sir. and const sign up button document dot get element by id sign up button right guys and as i said that there could be sophisticated methods to get form data i don't want to do it right now so i just want to keep things simple whatever you already know with it okay so once we have done this thing what should i say now quickly quickly sign up button the event event click dot add event listener right click function right and in this function uh we are going to call we are going to call the get weather method post ajax right post ajax we are going to call post ajax post ajax needs to have url it needs to have data it needs to have success function it needs to have failure function how would i know because i had this function over here where is that right so this function is going to have url data success failure right and specially make note of this thing that how do we want to have data right so this is special thing so we come back over here so we say first of all let url is equal to right let url is equal to what uh so we are going to post it so we are going to send it to slash sign up route right so we are going to have uh, send it to slash sign up route right got it hello yes sir yes so this is the url once we have this url next we will create data so we say let data is equal to so quotes so it will have the something like this <coughs> sorry so it will have so let me use back text right so i thought to use back text you know it is easy here right and they are right sometimes back text are easy right so we say and once again refer to this so let me copy this and let me paste it over here just for reference so that you can see that how do we want to uh, formulate this particular uh, data so it would have the item name equal to whatever the value and then ampersand sign and then next item name and then next value right so this is this is the way we have to format it so we say we come over here let data is equal to name is equal to dollar sub okay we have to have name right name is going to come from here right 
So we come here, we say let name is equal to sign up name dot value. Mind this thing that this sign up name by itself is full fledged DOM component, right? And we have to access the value property to get the value of, out of it, right? So sometimes people, okay, let's put sign up name and then they will put head, hey, hey, what is happening here with us, right? So main thing here is that that is an object, right? That is a DOM object and this is actually the value, right? And similarly, we say let, uh, email is equal to sign up email dot value right and then you know we can have uh, what uh, let what else password password is equal to sign up password sign up password dot value right and by the way once we have got it we can actually have front end front end validation right so we can run front end validation over here always remember this thing that this front end validation could only be for uh, uh, for for you know better user experience, it is never a security, right? Because this code is definitely in the reach of your customer or hacker, and they can easily modify it, right? So there cannot be any security at the front end whatsoever. The only thing at the front end exists is the uh, is the better user experience, right? So we can come over here and we can say that front end validation. And for now, we make it open. Empty function, which is returning true. And you should be capable enough to write this function, right? So basically for now, I'm just putting it. So, so let me just uh, come back. And so this is the URL. So URL is sign up. Let's put it here. And then I wanted, I was about to create the data. So I come here, control V. So data, right? So data name is equal to dollar bracket name. So basically it would be taken. So instead of plus, you know, breaking it and plus this thing, plus this thing, we can use this, uh, uh, you know, uh, template strings here. So, and uh, what else is going? Email is going, email is equal to dollar, braces email and password is equal to dollar braces password right guys hello yes. everybody so uh, let me delete this and once you know we have validated we will put the Ajax request here. Right guys? Right, so this is where we will send our Ajax request, right? And once that response will come, what is the definition thing is that we need to write success and failure functions, right? That we have, those we have not written yet. So just see this thing that how do the success and failure function look like? So success and failure both are taking only one argument so for the time being, we just for stub purposes, we say success. We say this is a function. This is a function. Success. And it is going to get a message, right? And we just console log the message. Similarly, we make Failure function very much similar. We say that this is a function and this is a failure function, right? And it is going to get an argument of message 
and we are going to console log the message. Right, guys? Hello, everybody. So yeah. basically, yeah. yes, right? So basically, you know, we have made it, right? This is the front end code which we have made right now. What we have not made? Connectivity with Mongo, uh, MongoDB. Connectivity with MongoDB is done already. So you can see this thing. The connectivity, this is the connectivity with MongoDB, line number 910. So here we are connecting Mongo, with the MongoDB, right? So what we have not done so far? Query to MongoDB, like insert. So the deal here is, look, this URL is going to hit slash sign up route, right? And in your server side, there is no slash sign up route over there. Yeah. Right, so basically there is no sign up route over there. So I have to create this sign up route, right? So we come over there. Mm. So this is slash post, right? So we come here, we say app dot post sub. Right, and we say slash sign up function. It is going to have request and response. Right, so this is the sign up route, and we just you know we do nothing but say uh, response dot send. Right, and here we send something. We say uh, JSON JSON dot uh, stringify JSON dot stringify and here in app message we say message testing. Right, so basically that Ajax request is going to go hit here and it is going to send us back testing. Right, an object with a message of testing, right? So basically we are not doing any sign up process right now, but this is where we are going to make the sign up process, right? But right now we have made the front end, which is request sending, or we can do this thing. Instead of testing, we can see that the, the body is coming, right? So for example, we can see uh, we can say message colon uh, request dot body. Request spelling, sir. Sorry. Request dot body, right? So whatever we get, we want to send it back, right? So let's see what are we getting here, right? So save it and let's see that what are we getting, right? So we come here, reload it so that we have the entire JavaScript loaded. Okay, syntax error, unexpected token, this, where sign up line 18, right? So let's see sign up line 18, what is this issue? Okay. Okay. Function. Right. Thank you. So basically, this is missing. Okay. Let's go back, reload. Okay. So now let's put things over here. Right. So for example, Avinash. Right. And say this is the email address. This is password. And we say sign up. Right. Failure, uh, okay, okay, why, 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 why? Why? Because we don't have more one and we have not restarted the server, right? So we come back here, reload it, right? And we say sign up. Okay, what is the issue now? 
sign up dot js line number 14 so failure is not defined ah, spelling mistakes Right? Okay. So reload. Right? And sign up. Okay. Can you see that whatever data we have written here, it went to the server and server sent it back to us in the form of JSON. Got it? Any question? Okay, so the next step would be to put this data into the, right, into the yeah, data, right, to create the account. And this I will do tomorrow, and today I'm going to check your homework. Okay, so let's stop here. So let me stop here.